Hello and welcome to the Voices Rising How to Write a Song video. My name is David Austin and I'm a music teacher and a passionate songwriter. And I hope this video will help you get started in prepping a song to submit to Voices Rising. If you're aged between 11 and 25 years old and you live, work or study in Waltham Forest, then please consider sharing your thoughts and experiences of life in lockdown through spoken word or music. Everything you send us will be edited into a film and launched as part of this year's App in the Air programme on the 18th and 19th of July, when this year's Walthamstow Garden Party would have been held. The aim of the project is to create a space where young creatives in the borough can share their thoughts and experiences of life in lockdown to a wider audience. But what you write about is completely up to you. Many of you watching this will already be experienced creatives and you won't need any help from me. I'm just here to set out a few starting points for those of you who feel like you might have a song brewing for this project. But please bear in mind songwriting is like any other creative pursuit and there are an infinite number of ways to stimulate your ideas and get started. So please take everything I say with a pinch of salt and in fact watch it all and then ignore it and then you might get a really unusual and interesting result. I'll be talking about how I might approach this particular songwriting brief and I'll give you some exercises to push the process along. I'm going to talk a bit about generating ideas and a little bit about lyrics. I'll also give you a crash course in chords and harmony, so get your thinking caps on. And we'll talk a bit about melody and song structure, although I really want to leave that up to you. None of these things need to be tackled in any particular order. They're just there to help you build confidence in your own abilities as a songwriter and to encourage you to have a go. Now, I'm essentially a guitarist and a guitar teacher, and 75% of the time when I'm writing a song, I like to start on the guitar. That's because I love chords and chord sequences and the way that notes and melodies seem to spring out of them. So if you play a chordal instrument, guitar or keyboard in particular, you'll easily be able to access everything I'm going to talk about. But if you don't play either of those instruments, maybe you could collaborate with a friend who does. If you're primarily a vocalist or a producer, please stay with me. I'm going to provide some backing tracks along with this video, which I hope might stimulate you to get started in a different way. And remember, use those whichever way you choose. If that helps you get started writing something, you can always ditch those backing tracks that I've done and rewrite or reproduce a backing track for your song, which I'm sure will be far more interesting. Of course, you vocalists and producers should also check out the vocalist video provided by Leon Mead and the music production video provided by MVP, as well as Ashling Fahey's spoken word video. And while spoken word and songwriting are two different disciplines, I'm sure Ashling will be able to provide you with lots of great ideas that you can apply to a song I'd really also encourage you to have a look at the Ableton Learn Music resources on Ableton's website. Ableton is a music production application. These resources are a great way for you to tap into everything we're going to cover in this video. I've been so impressed with this online resource. It's extremely well set out and you can experiment with all sorts of aspects of music right there in your browser. I'll put a link hopefully in the video or certainly in the resources that accompany this video. Well, I hope you've got your instrument ready. It might just be your voice, or perhaps you've got a guitar or a keyboard or some music production software or equipment. Get that set up. I also recommend downloading one of the free voice memo recorders for your phone or any other device. I use one all the time. It's a great way to, you can just mumble into the device with melodic ideas, lyrics, and then you can chuck out what you don't like and pick out the useful parts to investigate further. So do get one of those on your phone and don't forget the faithful pad and pencil ready for your notes.
was that. I don't know. That was an idea. And I want to talk to you now about ideas. I've always written songs since I was in my teens and I've been involved in music production since I was in my early 20s. Um, but it's only in the last five years, I'd say, that I've really understood something about songwriting that I wish I'd understood earlier. Well, there's a couple of lessons and they're going to sound really obvious. Number one, show up. And by that, I just mean start work. Don't be afraid to make a mark on that metaphorical sheet of paper. Um, oftentimes I work with students whose ideas are as interesting and stimulating and exciting to me musically as anything I hear from the professionals. But those students sometimes lack confidence to follow through their ideas. Because we somehow think that the pros and the, you know, the famous ones have got the secret that we don't have and our ideas seem too simple or too obvious. Don't let that put you off. Please get started follow through your ideas because you learn so much in the process. And my second point is kind of in, in, in concert with that, which is finishing. It's kind of obvious, but that's the next most important lesson. And it took me years to understand this, and I still don't do it properly. I've got loads of what I hoped would be masterpieces sitting on the shelf that, you know, I couldn't finish because I couldn't quite let go of the fact that they weren't turning out the way I'd imagined them, not quite as perfect as I'd imagined them. Um, and it took me too long to learn that lesson. And what I really urge you to do is understand that it's only through practice of producing more work and being prolific that you really refine your skills. So every project has lessons to teach us about our art and about our work, but we really only grab those lessons when we finish the project. So please, if you start something, finish it, even if you're not in love with it at the end. Um, the last thing I'd say is authenticity. What really resonates with people is your authentic voice. So don't be afraid to show that. That's where the magic lies. Now I'm gonna get back to mucking about with this idea. <laughs> So in the brief for the Voices Rising um, call out to artists, there are a number of questions posed to the potential contributors, and that's you. These should really get you thinking. So I'm gonna stick them up on the screen, and this is our first exercise. I want you to look at these questions, pause the film, and take a few minutes to write down your answers to all of these questions. Do you have a go at answering those questions? I can see now that for me, the whole period has been one of very mixed emotions actually. And there's a few key words that have sprung out. Stressful, restful, peaceful, changeable, sunny, and anxious. And I think somewhere in there is a mood that I might be able to tap into for my song. So I'm gonna park those ideas and come back to them. I just want to get a disclaimer in. I say I'm a songwriter, but I tend to write with singers and for other singers, and I never sing in public. So I'm a bit nervous about this, but I guess I'm going to put my money where my mouth is and write something and sing it on here. So wish me luck, and hopefully that will encourage you to do the same. <laughs> Let's start by looking at one of the considerations in songwriting, and that's chords and harmony, and let's unpack some of that. Harmony is a rich, complex subject, and you could study it for years, but for now, let's just think of chords and harmony as providing us with a kind of bed to rest our melody, our vocal melody on. Oftentimes, a sequence of chords, or even a single chord, can provide us with enough um, stimulus to generate melodic material 
and mirror it over the top. Or you can work the other way around, and this is a great way to work. Start with a melody and then find an interesting way to support it with chords underneath. Um, both of those approaches are equally valid. Um, but what I'd like to do is give you an opportunity to play with some chords and see if they help you generate some ideas for your song. So we're going to look at a couple of things. Diatonic triads. Diatonic means through the key centre. So triads are simple three note chords that come from a particular scale or key. We're also going to look at the way musicians use Roman numerals to refer to the chords in a particular key. And then I want to give you some chord sequences to try out. So what's diatonic harmony? If a melody is diatonic and in a certain key, it only uses the notes from that scale, although not necessarily all of them. And if a chord sequence is diatonic, that means all the notes used to build the chords come from that scale. And much, though not all, of the music we listen to is purely diatonic. So triads are the simple three note chords we encounter in a first study of chord construction. That's how chords are built. And the best way to understand these is by playing them on a keyboard in what we call root position. This way you can see how the three notes of a triad relate to one another. Let's start with the scale of C major. Everybody starts with this one because it doesn't have any sharps or flats in it. And that makes things easier to understand at first. So here's every note of the scale. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. And here's every note of the scale with a number. We're going to build simple three note chords on every note of the scale to produce seven chords. And we do this by stacking thirds. That means we'll take every second note above the root note of each of these chords. So for example, if we build our first chord, chord one, we begin with the, the note C as our root note. Then we add the third note, which is E, and the fifth note, which is G. C, E, G. We then do the same for each note of the scale, building up in thirds. D, F, A. started. Okay, so that can take a while to sink in. Do take some time and just play around with those triads. See if you can spot the difference between the major and the minor. and How many steps or half steps we call them between the root and the third for the minor chords and the major chords. The minor chords provide a darker, sadder sound, we say. And it's worth bearing in mind because you can really use that as a tool to reinforce the mood, the emotional mood that you want to convey in your song. Because of the way a major scale is constructed, we always get the same combination of major and minor triads when we harmonise a scale. Major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, and diminish. For this reason, we use Roman numerals to name the chords. Many musicians find it helpful to discuss chords in their Roman numeral positions. They might say, this song is 145 in G, rather than saying, this song is G, C, and D major. Now, we can begin to combine some of these chords to create progressions for our song. Some chord progressions are very commonly used in songwriting. 
Here are some examples. I want you to pause the video here to experiment with some of these chords on a guitar or a keyboard or perhaps on Ableton Music. I'm sure you're very comfortable with the meaning of the word rhythm. Now harmonic rhythm just means the duration and timings of the chord changes. last example creates more of a sense of momentum and that kind of harmonic rhythm is very commonly used in contemporary songwriting. So I've been playing around with those diatonic chord sequences and I think for my song I'm going to play in the key of G and I've happened upon this simple sequence. It's really six Because six, which is the E minor chord, sounds like home, you could say that it's in E minor. And I'm using a harmonic rhythm of two bars per chord. I haven't worked out the melody yet, but it's somewhere in here. So I'm going. La -da. tempo. That's musical speed. I'm sure you're aware and usually musical speed is given in beats per minute, BPM. Um, musical speed affects the emotional quality of your song. Ballads are slow, up to tempo songs are energetic. Here's an exercise for you to think about tempo. Go to Ableton's Learn Music site, one of the pages with the um, a drum sequencer. You can alter the tempo on, the, on those uh, pages. Alter the beat so it works effectively at these tempos. word about lyrics. The songs I love are the ones that put me straight into that world where I can understand the narrative thread and I can picture what's happening, I can picture what the singer's talking about. So when you're writing this song for Voices Rising, think about telling a story. So it's great by the way to have broad statements but I think it can be even more powerful to bring them into the detail. Detail, detail, detail. I'm going to give you a couple of examples and there are thousands of examples of really incredible lyric writing. Think about your point of view. 
I want to speak about Stevie Wonder, one of my all-time favourites, and two great songs of his written from two different points of view. Love's in Need, the narrator's voice is a radio announcer. The other Stevie Wonder song I wanted to mention is Saturn, from his Songs in the Key of Life album. And he's singing this song from the point of view of somebody from another planet, from Saturn, who wants to go back to Saturn because they're not quite happy with what's going on on Earth. Great way to tell a story. Check out Joni Mitchell's The Case of You where she compares how much um, she's in love with being able to drink a whole case of wine and still be on her feet. The other great tool um, for lyrics is keep it conversational, you know, keep it really ordinary. What would you say? Use the language you'd say in conversation rather than trying to get too um, high-minded and poetic. That's a mistake I've made a lot. And I think the more prosaic and ordinary, ordinary the lyrics are somehow, the more relatable they are. A good example is um, Leanne Le Havis's recent um, great tune, Bittersweet, where the opening um, lyrics, you can just tell that she's on the phone to her partner. And do you remember what I said about detail? Storytelling. Give the detail and everything seems so much richer. So show, don't tell. A couple of great examples from one of my absolute favorite songwriters, Bill Withers. Listen to Grandma's Hands and the way he describes his, sorry, the way he describes his love for his grandma. Isn't that amazing? And check out Bill's tune, Who Is He and What Is He To You? Gives a great sense of the tension of jealousy in a love affair and the way that's described in the verses of this song with a great groove as well. Okay, so now we've listened to those classic songs. I hope you didn't find that too intimidating. I'm sure you didn't. I did. Um, we're going to have a go at some free writing. So this is a great way to just stimulate those lyric writing creative juices. And what we're going to do is set a timer for five minutes. Put pen to paper and don't look up for five minutes. Don't stop writing. Don't worry about repetition. Don't even think about what you're writing. Don't look back at what you're writing. Just write. Open that feeling of putting pen to paper. So, got your timer ready? Glasses on. Here we go, I'll see you on the other side. Okay, so how did you get on? And um, what I meant to say was don't forget to refer back um, to your answers to the initial Voices Rising brief questions that we looked at, because that could help put you in the mood for where you're at for this um, free writing exercise. So I did mine and it's pretty weird. It's always pretty weird. But that's the point. And sometimes you don't get anything, and but it just helps free up your mind to start putting pen to paper and writing those verses. And other times you get stuff that, hmm, that's strange. Let me pick that out and, and um, you know, interrogate that a bit more. So I've got, forgive me, I'll read some of this. It's utter. Nonsense, really. Lockdown life, living in a crazy world, anxious, not sleeping, phone bleeping, try keeping your head down, don't look down, don't turn around, stand and stare, keeping, starting, start again, don't be afraid, don't change, so strange. Looks like we're all going to fade. Oh my days, it's time for tea. I'm thirsty, why does this pencil need sharpening? Why does the sky keep darkening? June rain. April showers, April sun, March is a memory, year begins, year is done. Glasses are uncomfortable, why am I getting old, old, old? And so on. You know, it's just thoughts flowing out on the page. 
Um, a couple of things that I quite liked. Lockdown life. Um, zigzag pattern turns up here. Gloss and fragrance. A lost equation. I don't know what that means. Memory evasion. Question. Night's falling, light's fading. And then this strange line. Lights are on, but no one's home. We all know that expression. I might come back to that. And then Friday dinner, uncertain future, strange times, another movie. But it's got me started and I've got my chords. So I'm going to go away and start to fiddle about with those ideas and those chords. And I want you to do the same. So I've got my chord sequence, two bars of E minor, two bars of C, two bars of G, two bars of D, and, and my little kind of melod melodic fragment. And I've just been having a go, trying to draw out some of those ideas from my free writing. This is what I've got so far. I told you I'm not really comfortable singing in public, but, um, you know, bear with me. So structure is how we put the chunks of our song together and we're all familiar with the expressions verse, chorus. Again, I can't emphasise this enough. There are no rules and if there are rules they're there to be broken. But if you're trying to follow through a piece of work and you're not sure, then take those rules and work with them. Particularly in pop music. I think it's a good idea to consider taking your listener through that journey and getting on with it. So maybe think about an eight bar verse and an eight bar chorus. And then very common simple structure would be to go verse, chorus, verse, chorus, verse, chorus. There is another great tool in pop structure, which is the pre-chorus. And I expect you will do this instinctively and often if it's not there in mind I'll know I need something and that pre-chorus just helps carry you and develop a sense of expectation as we arrive at the chorus and often the chorus will be a repeated idea whereas the verse will bring in new lyrical material each time. I think I've got a bit of an idea for my pre-chorus. sure how to end it to land into the chorus and I still haven't got the chorus yet um, but I've got this I'll sing the verse first and into the pre-chorus you I'll have a think about that it should be I promise you but I couldn't get that to fit I'm gonna bash that around a bit you get back to work okay so I think I've got my chorus idea I wanted to introduce a bit more energy so I've changed the harmonic rhythm but I've, I've still kept to all these diatonic chords so I'm using G A minor um, which is one, two in the key of um, G. 
and then C to E minor, which is four to six, and then I'm going back to the C for a slightly um, open, unresolved sound on chord four, and that's my pattern I've got. So I've got this kind of. Um, because it sounds a bit more unsettled um, so now I've got to try and bolt those bits together remember don't let that inner critic get the better of you we're just gonna finish this piece of work right Neighbor hates my singing, maybe. 